usual. Is this is he usual or unusual? He's considered uh, he's considered unusual. Okay, unusual because he's outside of the two. Go ahead and do the shack. Shack's height. Dude, this sounds like a dance move. Do the shack. <laughs> You know what, Thomas? I will, but I'm not doing that on video. <laughs> Maybe someday. I do have to do a choreographed dance for the Relay for Life in Atwater, so I'll have to make something. Maybe we'll call that the Shack. For <laughs> yeah. one, um, okay, you said that's considered unusual, right? Yes. Okay. What would you consider usual? Two or less. Well, we'll cover that in just a bit, okay? I'll, do, I'll actually do that in class. In like five minutes. Trust me, I'll get to it. Did you do the Shaq's height? It'd be cool to have a name like The Shaq, wouldn't it? Or a single name like Seal. Love that. <laughs> anyway, so we calculate this one. We've got our, what's our x in this case? Minus our mean. Do you notice how we're using a different mean? Not the same as that one, right? Because he wasn't a president that I know of. Um, so we, we have to use the appropriate data because you're talking about a different population now. So we have completely different values. Because again, you're basing it back on his relative group. That's why these are measures of relative standing, how he relates to his own group. Divided by 3. So our z score here is, well, 6 divided by 3.3. What is that? No, that was wrong. One, 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 eight, two, eight, two. A two at the end of the eight? Okay. Got it. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's good. We're okay? Sweet. I didn't do this math. I'm happy. I'm trusting you. What a mistake, I guess. Just kidding, kidding. Okay, so now we can answer the question, who is taller Shaq? Who is relatively taller? Yeah, look at the look at the z scores. It says compared to their own populations, LBJ was relatively taller than Shaq, because Shaq, when compared to the Miami Heat players, wasn't all that tall. A lot of them were very tall guys. So he's only 1.82 standard deviations away from the mean. He's taller than them, right? Because it's positive. I hope you're catching this. I'm saying a lot of important things here. It's positive, which means he was taller than most of them, right? The average. So this positive z-score means you were taller than. Uh, but he wasn't as much taller than his players as LBJ was than his presidents. They were both taller than average. LBJ was further taller, more taller, relatively speaking. How many people understood that idea there? Good for you. Good. Now, well, I'm going to answer your question right now, Karina. How do you tell what is usual and what is unusual for z-scores? Well, if you think about it, we're really not doing anything any different than what we did on Wednesday when we uh, found out how many standard deviations were between two numbers. We're just doing it on an individual data by piece by data piece uh, situation. So, do you remember the empirical rule? I hope so. I'm not going to draw it again, but the empirical rule said what percentage of data fell within one standard deviation? And then within two? And then within three. So within one standard deviation, you get 68. Within two standard deviations, you got 95. Within three standard deviations, you got 99.7. What's the z score give you again? Okay. If the z listen carefully, please. If the z score is one, listen, please. If the z score is one, that means you're one standard deviation away. If it's negative one, that means you're one standard deviation away in the other direction. What that means is if you are between negative, a z-score of negative one and positive one, you are within one standard deviation of the mean. Are you following me on that? 
That means 68% of your data is going to be between a z-score of negative 1 and a z-score of 1. It's the same information. It's just given to you a slightly different way. So if I have, by the way, what's a z-score? What's a z-score if I give you the value of the mean itself? If you look at this formula, if I said, for, for instance, what if LBJ had been 71.5? Right here you get 71.5 minus 71.5. Are you with me on that? What would you get there? Zero. So a z-score at the mean is zero. So in the middle of our data, we get zero. If you go over one standard deviation, that's a z-score of one or negative one. If you go over two standard deviations, that's a z-score of 2 or negative 2. And three standard deviations, of course, we get 3 and negative 3. This looks kind of familiar to you, I hope. The only thing I don't have is this. And well, now I, I, I have that. <laughs> this looks very familiar to you. <laughs> What percentage of data falls within this range? 68. What percentage of data falls within this range? 95. What percentage of data falls within this range? 99.7. So 68% is going to be between negative 1 and 1 for your z-score. 95% is going to be between negative 2 and 2 for your z-score. 99.7 uh, between negative 3 and 3. What was considered usual? The 95% range was considered your usual. Are you with me on that? What that implies for us, so draw your lines like this, put this range in here is usual. What that implies, because the same information, is that any z-score, listen carefully, any z-score between the range of negative 2 and 2 is going to be considered usual. Any z-score outside of that range would be considered unusual. It's the rule of thumb. It's just applied to z-scores now. We haven't changed the rule. We just know, now know the, the word z-score. Are you seeing the crossover there? So I'll, I'll write that out for you. A z-score between negative 2 and 2 is considered usual for right now. Um, a a z-score outside of the range of negative 2 and 2 is unusual. if I need to write the next statement because it's kind of just the corollary of this. If it's between negative 2 and it's usual, outside of negative 2 and 2, and two would be unusual. Unusual would be less than negative 2 or greater than 2. That's outside that range of numbers right there. Okay. So since our z-score tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean we are, that's exact, that's all it does, right? It's a number of standard deviations away from the mean. It tells us how usual or unusual a data value is. That's what the z-score is used for. So let's take a look at Shaq and LBJ again. Um, left side of the room over there. Would you say that Shaq has a usual height or unusual height? Why would you say usual? Great, yeah, one point that's less than two. It's usual. Is it at the close end of being unusual? It's fairly close. I mean, it's close to two, so he's getting up there. 
but it's still considered usual. How about LBJ? Unusual. He crosses over that. Not by much, though. Right? He's not that unusual. Let's say we had a z-score of 4. Usual or unusual? Very unusual. Very unusual. That's way out there. 3. 3 would be very unusual, okay? Past 3. 4? Oh my gosh, he'd be like a giant. <laughs> he'd be like Shaq being president. That would be very unusual. Height-wise, height-wise, I mean, clearly he could be president. He's qualified. But, uh, joking. But height-wise, <laughs> he, he would be very tall for a president, okay? That's, that's the idea. So because z-score tells us the number of standard deviations away from the mean, it can also tell us how rare a piece of data is. We are going to be using this to our advantage later on to determine whether or not hypotheses are true or false. Just using this information, it's kind of nice. Very cool. We'll get there. Let's do one more. Talk about this. What if uh, LBJ happened to, is he dead? He's probably dead, right? It's happened that he would be resurrected and played for the Miami Heat. It should be cool, using this statistics. Would it be weird, like height-wise, if he played for the Miami Heat? <laughs> It'd probably be weird anyway, because, you know, presidents really don't play for the Miami Heat, not professionally at least. So let's find out if LBJ played for the Heat, if that would be usual or unusual. Figure that out. LBJ plays for heat. Let's figure that out. Because we're putting, I want to make sure you're doing this right right now. Because you're putting LBJ on the Heat's team, what's your X value? <laughs> Great, that's still his height. That didn't change. But what mean should you be using now? Eight. Yeah, he's now on the Heat. So we're using him for the Heat. So we'll have the 76, that's him, minus 80, he's now on that team. I'm not going to be able to calculate the new average with him on it because clearly, I mean, I don't know the information. So we're going to stick with the same average divided by the same standard deviation of 3.3. .3. Has anyone done that already? Yeah. What do you get? Negative? negative? Oh, negative. What's negative mean again? He's he's less less. He means he's, he's, low, he's less than the mean. Clearly he was, right? Notice how we have to do this in this order. Otherwise you'd get a positive implying LBJ would be higher than average when he's not for the heat. So here we get, what did you say again? Negative? Okay, so negative 1.21. My question is, would it be usual or unusual if someone of LBJ's height were playing for the Miami Heat? Why? Sure. It's within that two range. So looking back at this, this would be unusual to have a president that tall. It's a greater than two. It would be usual for someone of Shaq's height to be playing for the Miami Heat. It would be usual, common, or not rare enough, for someone of LBJ's height to be playing for the Miami Heat. How about Mr. Leonard's height? <laughs> seven, seven, two, I'm I shrunk, I swear I did. I used to